You know, I thought it was a choppy game. You know, we just you know, we're going to have to adjust. It's college basketball in 2015. I thought that, you know, from the time we've had officials in for practices and the times we've had officials uh, for our closed scrimmage, um, we didn't foul as much as we did today. Uh, I think, you know, give credit to their, their, uh, their little guards, especially Maurice Jones. I mean, he's uh, a high-level talent on any level. And he, he puts uh, incredible pressure on your guards when he drives at you, and he's quick as a water bug. And so it's, it's a challenge, but it's something that we have to adjust. We have to be able to, to defend uh, without fouling and not turn into a free throw contest because eventually you're going to run out of bodies. You're going to run out, run out of guys, um, you know, on your team. So that's on us. We got to do a better job adjusting to how the game's going to be called. Uh, I think that was a good learning experience for our team. A couple areas that I thought you know, we were really inconsistent in uh, were the fact that we turned the ball over 11 times in the second half, and then we um, uh, we didn't finish the possession with blocking out. You know, we gave up 13 offensive rebounds. And no disrespect to Northwood, but they're not the athletic teams uh, or an athletic team that we'll be facing uh, starting even on Friday night. So. Um, we have to we have to get better in those areas, and we will. I think offensively, we have a very talented team, a team that has to get to the, the free throw line even more, has to get inside the, the lane even more. Um, but we share the ball. Sometimes we shared it to the wrong team today, but we did share the ball. We, our team passes the ball well. I think what Matt and Dee brought a year ago, uh, the, this group of guys, Team 94, uh, is continuing to do that, and I, I don't think that will be a problem with our team. Um, so there's a, there's a lot of stuff that we have to clean up. We have, uh, what, six days to do so before we play our home opener. And um, that's it. It seemed in the first half it was really kind of guard dominant for you guys. How, how can you involve the post players more? What do you mean guard dominant? I mean, I just feel like the post players didn't have as much production as the guards did for your team. Well, I think, number one, that um, you know, we, we don't have um, monster post players. You know, we don't have a guy like Matt Stainbrook who's going to give us 20 points every single night in there. Having said that, Jalen, you know, got double teamed, you know, when he caught the ball off, you know, outside the box. So, you know, I don't want him forcing shots like he did in the second half um, and hit the bottom of the backboard. So you got to do what the game tells you to do. Now, we also took way too many threes to start the game, and our team was well aware of that. And, and I thought we adjusted after, um, you know, after the first four minutes, I think we five or six threes. We end up shooting 18 of them for the game. So we obviously did a much better job of uh, attacking the lane the way we wanted to. But um, when, the, when we threw the ball inside, they post trapped. I don't, I don't want our guys shooting against double teams inside. You mentioned the three point number. Is there a sweet spot, or is it just do what the game tells you to do? Because this group is a little bit different with more shooters than you've had. Yeah, you got to do what the game tells you to do. But having said that, if you get a, uh, a good three point shot with, you know, Four seconds into it, um, are they guard, are they not guarding you for a reason? You know you got to be a, you know uh, an efficient shooter. Got to be a guy that makes makes shots. So and we also want to be in position to be offensive rebounders. And so this isn't you know pop a shot, get the first one up as quick as you can. Uh, we we want to make sure that we always get good shots. And I think that's a mark of a team that plays unselfish, that that finds the open man. The guys like to play with one another because uh, we're not just firing it up anytime we get it. That also, like I said, give us an opportunity to, to be in the right position to offensive rebound. So there is no. Room. I wouldn't say there's a, there's a number that that we're shooting for. Some games you're going to shoot a little bit more from the three point line, um, you know, based on how the how the other team plays you. How would you assess the point guard play today? I thought Edmund and Larry both played pretty well. Yeah, I think Ed's got to be better on the defensive end. Um, you know, he's ultra talented on the offensive end. I, I don't worry. Uh, our point guards are. Very, very coachable guys. They're, they're two really talented guys. Um, you know, Larry was um, excellent on both ends of the floor tonight. Uh, he, he has a big time pulse. He brings a lot of energy to our team. Uh, I love the way he played. Edmund played really well on offense. Got to do a better job defensively. You know, again, he's 6'6", and he's trying to guard, guard a 5'8", five, 5'9", five, water bug. It's a big challenge, but uh, last time I checked, he's going to be having some challenges uh, on a nightly basis here in the, during the season. What does McKenna need to do to get more time on the court? Uh, he has to play better. Is it 
offense, defense? Everything. You got to play better. You were talking about the, the defense overall, the team earlier, and all the fouling. Is it, was it more of uh, playing bad defense against opposition causing you to foul, or is it more of a guys have to adjust? I guess assess your defensive play. Um, you know, I, I think there were some times that, uh, you know, the guards tried to go downhill on us, and, and we got to continue to move our feet. And, you know, so much is instinct to put a hand on, on a guy that something maybe you got away with a year ago. Uh, again, part of it's the opposition. They, they had some quick water bug guards that are putting pressure on you. Gotta be, you got to be able to move your feet, stay in the play, and use your length, which is your advantage against smaller guards like that. Uh, and then defensively, our, our big guys had to do a better job when, they, when their man went into a ball screen of not letting those guards turn the corner and get in the lane. And that happened on a few occasions. Obviously, JP can score. We, we've seen that in the past. Is he improving in other areas that's allowing you to try to get him? I think so. I think so. You know, he, he's been in, in and out of a few practices because of injury this year. Um, but uh, he plays really hard. You know, he has to uh, be able to discipline himself to play the way that we want defensively. You know, I think he's a risk taker. He's a gambler. He does, he's that way on both ends of the floor. And uh, he's got a lot of talent, but we've got to rein that in on the defensive end. He's got to be solid, and he knows that. And then he also has to be solid on the offensive end. He's got to get good shots, let his teammates find him for good shots, and then take care of the basketball. Because, he, you know, he has that gunslinger's mentality, and uh, we, we need to be solid first and then and build from there. And I think he recognizes that, and he did a really good job tonight. To have no assists or no turnovers um, is a really good thing for J.P. You've always said that the biggest growth in a player has been their freshman and sophomore year. And while it's really early, how do you think Trayvon has just progressed from last year to the start of this year? I think he's a much better defender. Um, you know, I think he's a guy that is really, really versatile. Um, you know, he, he's, he's going to have a really good year for us.